I just got done playing the Outer Worlds, at least finishing the main quest, and I wanted to, at the beginning of the video here, save some of you the trouble. If you're wondering if I think it's good, yes, I think it's amazing. I think it's one of the best games I've played in years. And if you're wondering if there's going to be spoilers in this video, I'm not going to try to avoid them. So, a little bit of a warning, if you haven't played through the main quest, you plan on playing the game, you don't want any part of the story to get ruined for you, you don't want anybody to be talking about main plot points or anything like that, you probably don't want to watch all the way through the video. You probably don't want to watch the video if you haven't done that yet, and you're interested and you don't want things spoiled for you. Something I also want to do in the video is avoid comparing this directly to Bethesda games. A lot of people are doing that, and the devs even spoke out recently in interviews about how it's not really about that for them. They're not trying to make some big Bethesda killer. It's not a big middle finger to Bethesda or the Fallout franchise or showing that they can do better. They just made a game. And I really want to look at the game for what it is and not comparing it against what other people have done. It's hard to not do that, so there probably will be some comparison. There will be some talk about Bethesda's Fallout games and Bethesda's games in general going forward in the video, but I don't want to just sit here and compare it the whole time. I realize that I'm coming at this from the perspective of a Fallout fan and what a Fallout fan should expect from this franchise or this this new IP that we're getting, but I don't want to sit there and dwell on all of the the back and forth between Bethesda and Obsidian and who's right and who's this and because that's that's a story for another day. I'm doing this video a little bit more unfiltered, not as structured as the ones I've been doing more recently, and that is because I want to kind of put forth my real feelings on this game. I, like I said, I just finished the main quest and I've been kind of grinding it in a sense for the past few days, playing as much of it as I can in between different projects that I'm working on and you know, just trying to live life, but uh, the the game is just fantastic, and I really want to talk about that in this video, address what I think about it in the sense of what is good, are there bad things about it? A lot of people are talking about the good, few people are talking about anything bad with this, so are there any bad things I experienced, or things that I thought could be improved, or maybe I didn't like, uh, just that that kind of stuff, so that's what this video is going to be. And let's just jump right into it. We'll start with the bad because it's an incredibly shorter list than the good. Uh, it's the bad. There really there wasn't a whole lot of bad when it came to the game, at least from my perspective. Uh, it was a little linear going into it. I did know that it was going to be a little more linear because I did, you know, I followed the game a little bit. I wanted to see what was getting posted about it, the reviews that came out before the game was released. I checked that stuff out to the extent where I didn't want things to really be spoiled for me, but I did want to see what people were saying about it. And I did hear that it was more of a linear type of thing. And when I played it, I got more of a Rage meets Ma uh, Mass Effect meets Bioshock kind of vibe, of course, with the Fallout vibe in there as well. Uh, the Bethesda type of game in there as well, but I got more of a vibe of something like maybe Metro Exodus. It was it was more of that style of gameplay, or maybe even the previous Metro games uh, with, with the way the story tells itself. Now, Metro being pretty linear, but if you were to take, like, you know, with the, the way Exodus does it, where it gives you smaller worlds and that's kind of more, oh, you're free to go and check out the side quests, you're free to go check out what's going on with all these other NPCs, but when it comes to the main progression of the game, there's going to be that linear feel with the main story, and you're going through, in this case, in in Outer Worlds case here, you're going from planet to planet via the main storyline, kind of, it guides you through these planets, and in fact, most of the time, you'll end up getting a quest that will give you something called a nav key, that, uh, that, that allows you to go to these different planets in these different uh, situations. And I personally enjoyed the exploration part of that, but we're talking about the negatives here, at least trying to address what I think they are. And honestly, there wasn't a whole lot of them. I think that a lot of people were upset that, uh, yes, indeed, when uh, you beat the main quest, the game ends. There's no, you know, playing past the main quest, but the game gives you plenty of warning before that. It tells you, uh, you have a big meeting with your companions and it says, hey, we're going to the point of no return here. If there's anything you need to do, anything else that you want to get done in the world, make sure to go do that. Then before you actually go onto the prison planet of, uh, Tataris, uh, this big, uh, prison planet that's run by, you know, what I would call the antagonist of the game, 
the board, depending on how you look at it, they could be the protagonist. <laughs> it really depends on how you played the game, which we'll get into later in the video on why that's such a good thing. But when it comes to that prison planet, they, they pretty much tell you before you go in there, hey, you know, like this is like New Vegas does before you go to Hoover Dam. It's like, hey, th this is the end of the line. If you go any further, it's the point of no return. And this is the last part of the game. So get your shit done because the game ends here. And I think that some games are going to do that. I'd love to see some DLC that maybe continued the story or gave us some more stuff to do in the world before that point. But if we don't get it, the story does feel complete to me. And again, I'm supposed to be talking about the negatives. But honestly, those are the, the, the few complaints that I've had because, yeah, I saw a couple of glitches. I saw a couple of bugs. Nothing game-breaking ever happened. I was able to complete all of the quests that I wanted to complete. I was able to do anything I set out to do. Uh, I was able to do it. So, honestly, the negatives, very small list for me. The things that I addressed are the main complaints I've heard about it, and they weren't that big of a deal to me because the way the game felt, especially with that main story thing where it ends at the end of the main story, didn't bug me that much. It, it, it felt like the story was complete. It gave me a good reward for all the time that I, I had invested into the story and these characters. And so overall, the negatives weren't even that bad, in my opinion. No big game-breaking bugs. There was a couple of times I got to say, there was this one time that this big starship crashed, like fucking out of nowhere. It just came out of the sky and it crashed. It uh, We were on the computer thing talking with people about it. And when I went to investigate it, the companions that I was with even were like, okay, we're going to hang back here, man. We don't like this. And so it made me feel like something big was going to happen, but nothing really happened at all. There was a reference actually to an Aqua Teen Hunger Force line in there from the Moon Knights. But other than that, there was nothing there. I thought something big was going to happen. Uh, again, that was just a small disappointment. It wasn't necessarily a big negative on the game. It was just something I was expecting. And then, you know, it, nothing happened. So... You know, and that, and that keeps you on your toes too, so I don't even necessarily see that as a large negative. I see it as like, well, you know, just something didn't happen there. Maybe it was like, it was, and also, the more I think about it, the ship was like slanted and weird. So maybe they just had the companions hang back because it might have been weird to try to have them all fit in there as a really slim corridor. So perhaps that's why they hung back, but it made me feel at the beginning like, oh, something big is going to happen, but nothing happened. So I was like, oh, I felt kind of disappointed there, but again. That's not a big slight on the game, that was just my expectations. As for what I liked about it, even though the, the list I was just talking about there, it just was me talking about things that I liked, but let's really get into what I liked about it. And for some reason I want to start with the companions, it's just in my mind that I want to start with the companions. The companions are so good in this game, it's so fleshed out, and a lot of people, I, I heard them being upset that you couldn't re romance companions, that there wasn't like really romance options with the companions, and I can understand that, but in the story, you know, it just, they weren't, it wasn't something that was in the story. One of them is clearly trying to get with somebody uh, else in the game. You have that uh, romance between Parvati and Jun Lee that plays out through the game if you engage in her side quest, which I did, and it was just wonderfully fleshed out. The character of Parvati is one of my favorite video game characters of all time. She's fucking amazing, adorable character, and you help her get with this engineer that she looks up to. And then that benefits you later on in the game, because um, I was surprised. I had my speech character uh, built up, man. I had like, you know, uh, over 100 in persuasion. You don't really need to build them past 100, but my buffs gave me over 100. Uh, pretty much the same with uh, lie and then intimidation was a little bit lower But as I went through the end parts of the game, I was able to get a disguise for the ending there on uh, Tartata, uh, Tart Tartatus, um, I believe and uh, That prison planet the big penitentiary the labyrinth that the board runs anyway, we get there and all of the people that I had helped along the way most of them came in with their armies and totally fought the fight for me. My uh, speech and stuff was so built up that with the disguise I could easily talk my way out of being discovered and uh, I was disguised so they weren't attacking me and everybody else was helping me so they were just fighting the board while I made my way through unharmed and it was just a fantastic way to see the character building and the way I had planned my character to kind of work out in my favor at the end and not really have to fight anybody. It was it was just a really nice way to finish it off to, to show, hey, you know, this worked out in your favor. It didn't just, you know, fuck you in the end where you're gonna have to fight everybody. And like my combat, my combat skills were good. My weapons do good damage, but the fact that I specced into that so hard, it was nice to see a reward for that. 
As for the companions themselves, each of them, they were rewarding to talk to, even the robot who didn't really have their own, you know, he didn't have his own side quests like everybody else did. But even he was a, f a fun person to talk to. He was engaging. He was more fleshed out than a lot of NPCs I see in games nowadays. Even the unnamed citizens had more going on with them sometimes than a lot of like just named P NPCs in games I've been playing recently. But yeah, the companions were great. You had Vicar Max. Uh, his story was really incredible. I really enjoyed it. Uh, you had, uh, of course, I talked about Parvati. She was probably among my favorite. You had Felix. Again, uh, Felix and Max, I really enjoyed their stories. Uh, with Max, you had this like weird, he needed to find something about a scholar and it turned out to be a book. And then it led him on some quest to talk to his dead mother through like some getting stoned ritual in this back room of this like witch's house. It, it was a really cool like, because he was so logical and like straight laced when you met him, it was a cool just a position to see that at the end of his quest. And with uh, Parvati, we talked about the relationship, that was the culmination of that, which did stretch across pretty much all of the planets, and you finally get it together, and it goes well, and it's really good, and she's all excited, at least that's how it went for me. Of course, you can meddle in that as you want, so for you guys who are out there playing it yourselves, you might have sabotaged those things, you guys might not have even done those things, because you may have killed those <laughs> people or something like that, and that's what makes this game uh, among some of the greatest. Uh, everybody else that was a companion, Nioka. Uh, like I said, Felix, uh, Parvati, all, all of their quests, it was just really, really, really fun to interact with them, to get to know them. Ellie as well, finding out that she's from the rich city of gold, uh, it, you know, it's just, uh, ugh, the game and the people, it made me care about these people. Even the ones that I didn't like, I at least had this emotion for them. Like, I wasn't too keen on Ellie, and then after learning her story with her parents and this life insurance claim, and her parents just, like, pretending she was dead, collecting all the money and not caring about her and stuff, it made me feel for her more because I was like, ah, oh, poor kid. You know, because, like, I, the whole game, I was like, God, you tried to. I even told her to her face, I was like, you're a fucking tryhard. That's it. And she was like, oh, shit, okay. But... That was what made it cool, is I actually felt like I kind of knew these these people for the time that I played the game, and I enjoyed it. So, the Companions, huge, huge, huge plus, in my opinion, and I think it's some of the best companion work I've seen in games recently. Yes, you can't romance them, and that seems to be a problem with a lot of people out there. It didn't bother me that much, but I understand it would have been nice to maybe develop a relationship with uh, one of them, uh, there, maybe there would be a couple of them that you'd be able to do that with. But they just didn't include that in the game, it wasn't a part of the story, and I can respect that because the rest of it surrounding it was so good that something small like that, uh, where, you know, like, I don't even think it was an oversight, it might have just been part of the story that that, you know, it just wasn't something that they wanted to explore through the game. And I think the game is fine without it. Uh, the game is really, really good, and so it's something that didn't bother me as much as uh, it seems like it's bothering some people out there. The game plays wonderfully. The, the first person shooting in it is wonderful and fantastic. I felt really good the whole time. And keep in mind, and I've heard a lot of people talk about this in my stream when I bring it up too, I'll be talking and because they'll be like, I'm kind of on the fence about Outer Worlds, and I, and I explain, I was too, going into this game before I knew it was going to be on Game Pass, I was incredibly skeptical of it, where I was like, okay, listen, I'm not just going to spend $60 on this game until I hear that, you know, people are, are finding it to be good, be, you know, you know, because I just have grown to distrust the gaming industry, and who could blame me? Look at where I'm coming from, I'm coming from the likes of Bethesda right now, and again, I don't want to make this video about that. But uh, that's mainly the games that I play, especially on my channel, and I've been kind of dicked around by Bethesda, as has a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people have been feeling pretty, not cheated, but kind of disrespected by Bethesda. And to have, you know, you just didn't know. I'm not just going to pre-order a game or something like that nowadays, because I've, I've been fooled too many times. But when it was announced that it was going to be on Game Pass, I was, oh, then all bets are off, because I, well, I always have Game Pass. I think it's a terrific service. <laughs> I think it's just an awesome service, because you get, you know, like 100 games or so, and they change them up every once in a while. 
uh, pretty much just with the with your membership of Xbox with the way they have it going right now so if you have a gold you just tie it together and then you get these games that you can play and it's a I think it's a cool service so knowing I was like oh especially if it's gonna have games like the Outer Worlds on it this game that I've been interested in uh, day one release it's gonna have this so I was wary too is what I'm trying to say I came into it very skeptical because I am not a huge fan of Borderlands I don't think Borderlands is a bad game I don't think that Borderlands is you know, the, 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 whoa, this is so bad or anything like that. I, it's just not for me. I've never really found a whole lot of enjoyment out of it. I don't know what it is about it. It's just something that I just never really enjoyed playing. And it doesn't mean that I think it's bad. Like I said, I've talked to a lot of people that enjoy it and I see what they're talking about. And I especially have to commend Borderlands 3 because releasing, they released a game as well with like no microtransactions or anything like that. And it seems like nobody's talking about the fact that they did that. It was just like, oh, hey, by the way, yeah, you unlock cosmetics by playing the game. Oh my God. <laughs> so big props to them for doing that. But we have another game like that with the Outer Worlds where they just, here's a full price game for a full price there you go and you know no pre-orders no like pre-order deluxe editions no special edition no uh microtransactions no oh if you get the season pass or anything they didn't even do a season pass which makes me worried because for the first time in a long time this is one of the games that i was like oh man i really hope to make a uh, you know dlcs and there, there's not a season pass or at least not one that i could find so i'm like oh shit <laughs> you know maybe they won't make any dlcs and maybe that's the way this story has to be i hope that they continue this franchise because it's so ah, i loved it so much but when it comes to the gameplay i jumped into it thinking ah you know i feel like it's going to kind of play like borderlands because of the way it looked you had a lot of the the arcadey type things going on with the numbers the damage numbers showing up on screen life bars above the enemies i was like oh you know i'm not i'm not really into that i'm more into the simulation you know like the way fallout and skyrim play where you you hit them until they're dead yeah there's some life bars sometimes and depending on how you do it there's vats and stuff like that but it feels more you know in, in, to me immersive without all that shit on the screen but a i think you can turn it off on the outer words worlds and if you can't then whatever but it didn't bother me and also uh the way the combat played out didn't bother me as well when you you can go into tactical time dilation or something like that it's when you slow down time it's their version of bullet time it works really cool because you can aim at certain body parts, you know, like you can in VATS, except you have to manually do it. And when you do it, you, you know, you shoot their head and it makes them blind. You shoot their groin and it makes them weaken. You shoot their uh, chest, uh, their torso or their arms, you know, it weakens each part. Uh, actually, I would oftentimes use my shotgun that was modified to have electricity uh, shells or whatever you would call it. And I would shoot them in the chest because it stuns them and it would launch them into the air. It was really cool. But uh, you you have all these things that you can do and weaken them like that. And I think critical shots outside of the slowdown time would have the same uh, negative effects, would debuff those uh, characters that you shot. That way if you hit a critical. But you get it every time if you shoot with the slowdown effect. And, it, and I really enjoyed the combat aspect of that. And yeah, on Xbox One, as you can see on your screen, I don't think it looks as good as it could because I've seen it on PC and it looks really amazing, but that didn't bother me. The graphics don't make the game for me. I do like seeing pretty games, of course. Of I love walking into a world and being like, oh, oh my God. But I got plenty of that from the Outer Worlds, even on something like the Xbox One, but I've seen it look just fucking amazing on PC. So definitely something that if you have the opportunity to play it on PC, I know a lot of people are holding out for Steam, and if that's your prerogative, that's fine. I understand the Epic Game Store thing is a big deal for a lot of people, and I understand why it's a big deal. I'm totally, totally on board with that, but I have it on console, so it wasn't so that that controversy didn't play into me wanting to play it, or play into me like having any qualms with it, and I think that's actually the only controversy that exists with this game, and it's just really, really, really good. And the game plays well, like I was trying to explain, with the Bethesda type gameplay, you have the quest markers that show up on your little compass, you have uh, different things like that, that are reminiscent of a Bethesda game, but you know, it does feel unique, it feels like it's its own thing, and when you get into the game world and you start to really experience the combat, really experience the NPCs, really experience the world around you, you really, really start to have some fun, you really, really start to get immersed, 
And the role-playing aspect is truly there because I found myself being like, oh, you know, like really torn on the decisions. And there's a lot of decisions. You want to talk about gameplay? The decisions in this game are off the fucking charts. It's something that I haven't seen in a really long time. It's almost like the gaming industry has been kind of like, well, we don't want to give them any hard choices because that'll confuse them and hurt their fragile little minds. But <laughs> this game like actually does throw you curveballs. And uh, not um, not in every quest, but in almost every quest, there's always something else that's like, well, or you could do it this way. And if you do it this way, it's going to have this effect, or maybe it's an unknown effect, but it's definitely going to be a different effect than how you would have done it before. So it's just, ugh, it's a breath of fresh air. That's what I want to say. It's a breath of fresh air. The soundtrack's good. The worlds are good. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, uh, I, not a lot of people, but I've heard complaints of, oh, it's so short the game is so short yeah if you ran through the campaign if you ran through the whole main quest it probably is pretty short but i really went through and did everything i could find to do and i spent a i think a fair amount of time in there i don't think it was uh, i can't think I, I i don't know off the top of my head how many hours i spent but i feel like it was 20 to 25 maybe even 30 hours on the game and i had a great time so i highly recommend this game if you have xbox do the game pass thing get get this through game pass it's worth the five bucks that you're gonna have to spend for game pass a month or whatever you can just sign up for the month i think they even do free trials or something get the free trial of game pass and play this game it's absolutely worth it it's a hundred percent worth your time i plan on buying it even though i have it on game pass i plan i plan when i can afford it i'm going to buy it i'm going to support these kinds of things because the more we support something like this i think the more a the the more that they can make they can make this they can make another one they can make a sequel they can make dlcs they'll have the triple uh, a money at this point to do that because this uh little studio i heard was close to not existing before they uh did the microsoft thing so let's just hope that 2k doesn't get their grubby little paws on it through private division and uh start to monetize it or be weird about it and it just gets to exist and flourish as not only a beautiful game but actually art it's fucking good guys uh, and this is coming from somebody you know i got into fallout when i was a kid and where am i coming out of the left field with fallout is because a lot of people you know tim kane invented fallout uh, a lot of people are making that connection and from a fallout fan's perspective this is truly something that I really enjoyed playing. A lot of people are saying it's New Vegas 2 or it's a, spirit, a spiritual successor and that's something I want to get into because Mr. House talked about colony ships and stuff like that. So I do want to talk about some possible ties between this and the Fallout franchise because they do mention a great war in the loading screens, but they don't really talk about it in the game and that's something I want to get into in more videos. So we have a lot of videos coming about the Outer Worlds. I just want to thank the developers of this game. It was fantastic. Such a wonderful experience to play through. And if you're not playing it, I really, if there's one game that you're going to play this year, you're worried, oh man, is it worth my money? Is it worth this? The Outer Worlds is 100% worth your stuff, man. It's worth it. Uh, don't go into it thinking it's going to be a, a Skyrim or a Fallout 4, because that's not what it is. Now, like I said, it plays a little bit more like a more open rage. A more open rage with Mass Effect vibes. It has Bioshock vibes. It has a lot of vibes from different stuff, and it really works well together. It, and like I said in the past video, is it absolutely perfect? No, but it's one of the best experiences I've had with a game in years. So pick it up, guys. It's been Mantis. Uh, I gotta testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die. You gon' trust the sky, you gon' trust the sky, baby girl, testify. Come up in the spot looking extra fly. For the day you die.